why are we studying the warrior archetype? It's a really good question. I mean, are we doing this because we intend to go to war? Because we want to start, you know, World War III or kill people or blow up the planet? I'll give you my answer. For me, it's about the inner war. That's why I'm studying the warrior archetype for myself. And when I say the inner war, I mean the war inside my own head, where I'm trying to understand who am I? Why am I here? How can I best live my life? How can I follow my own star? How can I help my brothers and sisters? How can I participate in society in a positive way? And in other words, the inner war is the war against enemies between my own ears. And who are those enemies? They're really the same enemies that a soldier faces on a physical battlefield. Fear, laziness, complacency, the tendency to believe that life is meaningless and that my existence is meaningless, arrogance, vainglory, self-doubt, lack of self-belief, all of those things that, that are vices that drag us down to a lower level. So to me, the warrior virtues are things that I can use against those enemies. But let me flash ahead now to a whole other different thing, to a whole other side of the planet, and to a book, a scripture actually, that has had a tremendous influence on my life, and that is the Bhagavad Gita, which is uh, a Hindu scripture. It's been called the Hindu Bible. They say that Gandhi freed India using the principles of the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita means Song of the Lord, and I'll tell you very briefly what the structure of it is. It's a short book. You can read it in an hour. On an ancient battlefield, two armies are lined up across from one another. Chariots, horses, bows, spears, armor, the whole, the whole nine yards. And we are with the great warrior Arjuna. And Arjuna looks across to the other to the enemies uh, uh, on the other side of the field, and he recognizes kinsmen and teachers and people that he knows. And in great distress, he decides, I can't really kill these people. I love these people. What good is that going to do? And he turns to his charioteer and he orders him. He says, drive my chariot out between the two armies and stop. And his charioteer does this. And at this point, Arjuna in even greater distress, lays down his immortal bow, Gandiva, and refuses to fight. And he says, I see friends, I see teachers, I see kinsmen across on the other side. Nothing good can come from this. Now, the first zinger in this story is that Arjuna's charioteer is Krishna. In other words, God in human form. So at this point, Krishna steps up before Arjuna and starts to read him the riot act and says to him, you are a warrior, stand up, go out there and fight. But here's the second zinger that's buried inside the first zinger. When Arjuna first looked across at the enemies and he names them, I see so-and-so, 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 so-and-so. The trick here is that those names in Sanskrit, which are also their personal names, but they also are names of vices and qualities of uh, lesser qualities of the soul. For instance, so-and-so, one of the warrior's names would be vainglory. Another warrior's name would be arrogance. Another would be lack of self-belief. Another would be fear. So what we're talking about here is Krishna, i.e. God, is telling Arjuna that he's not fighting an outer war, he's fighting an inner war. So what Krishna is saying when he's talking to Arjuna and saying, slay these enemies without mercy. What he means is slay these vices, these negative tendencies inside your own self. But Krishna goes even farther than that. And this is really kind of the heart of the Bhagavad Gita is he says, the reason why these qualities, these vices are negative and must be slain by you is because they separate you from the higher part of yourself. They separate you from me, in other words, meaning they separate you, Arjuna, the warrior, from me, Krishna, God. And the, the Gita then goes on. The whole rest of the Gita is Krishna giving spiritual instruction to Arjuna. And it gets into really deep stuff. It gets into qualities of duality, non-duality, attachment, non-attachment, 
karma, previous lives. It even gets into uh, the pre-runner to quantum mechanics in a section called the field and the knower. But the whole central aspect of the Gita, and this is the inner war, is about what Arjuna is instructed to do. The word in Sanskrit is yoga, which doesn't mean yoga, what we're talking about, you know, at a yoga studio, but the essence of our English word yoke, meaning the union, the union between our lower nature and our higher nature, or between Arjuna, the warrior on the material plane, i.e. you and me, and Krishna, i.e. our highest level, the divine God. Now, with this in mind for what the warrior archetype is and the inner war, we're now gonna move back in our next few episodes back to the Spartans and kind of see how they, in their education and in the way they lived their lives, try to inculcate this exact dynamic, moving from the lower level to the higher level using the virtues of the warrior archetype. Mm -hmm.